Hey, welcome. My name is Knut, and today we are in Danny Vicente's world. Uh. <laughs> welcome. Um, Danny, how are you doing? I'm doing well, man. Thanks. Thanks Good. for inviting me. Yes. Um, so I want to know, what do you do here at Mount Union? Essentially, uh, as a TD, as a technical director, um, I handle all the essential functions of um, uh, everything in the technical world. Um, which oversees the IT department, which uh, oversees the media department, all the social media, audio, video, lighting. Um, uh, so essentially, I, I tell people, whatever you hear and whatever you see, that's yeah. what I do. Yeah. <laughs> so. Wow. I've seen you in action. And for those of you who don't know, Danny is one of the um, best technical director there is. Um, and I say it without an apology because he's not only leading tech guys um, to do tech stuff and to get it right at a high level, but he's also spiritually over the ministries that he leads. And that is important. Um, so for those of who's watching that don't know what a technical director is, Tell them what we do to make a Sunday run. <laughs> we put out fires. That's what we do. Yes, yeah, so we carry around hoses and we put out fires. Yeah. Uh, essentially, um, a technical director essentially uh, organizes uh, all the teams um, and uh, is really the glue um, for all the teams, um, meaning, meaning uh, um, once the equipment is just turned on, that's just the beginning. Right. Yeah. He has to, the technical director has to make sure that uh, everything stays on the train tracks and um, um, any technology. It doesn't matter what amount of money you've paid for that technology um, can 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 uh, begin to drift every now and again. Right. Mm -hmm. So what we do as technical directors, we keep everything leveled and straight ahead so that uh, everyone um, uh, can uh, enjoy the services, enjoy the worship. Um, uh, so, but behind the scenes, um, uh, what people don't see is, yeah. is, uh, you know, uh, um, we get here very early, very early, <laughs> very, let me say that again, <laughs> very early. So if we start, uh, per se, our services here at Mount Enon starts at, uh, 845. Our, um, run through, uh, is at 730. Mm -hmm. Um, I get here typically, um, between 435 o'clock. Um, some, you know, at the latest 5.30. In the morning? In the morning. <laughs> um, and the reason for that is um, there are a lot of systems that have to come up. And um, a lot of our systems here are, are um, not only running on Maddie, but they're also running on, on, uh, on Dante. Mm -hmm. Right? So um, um, our video is run um, on, um, on the network as well. So uh, even though it worked on Saturday... I turn it on, and um, we need to make sure it works on Sunday. So that when the volunteers come in, we ask the volunteers to come in about a half an hour before our run-through. So that would be 7 o'clock. Mm -hmm. um, by then, uh, you know, we want to take the pressure. Our volunteers are, are essentially operators and supporters of the ministry. And, um, you know, when they come in, uh, we take all the pressure off of them to make sure all they're doing is operating the equipment at, the, at its highest capacity. Yeah. Right. So if it's not at its highest capacity, then then um, um, uh, we begin to um, operate at a lower level. That's just not um, where we want to be. So so um, and it becomes uh, discomfort for the volunteers, for the team and then essentially for the entire worship service. Right. Yeah. Because uh, once they start noticing things, you know, either lights not working or mics not working. Uh, yeah. Batteries not in. The wireless, uh, <clears throat> you know, we check all of those. Uh, we don't take for granted that we put fresh batteries on Thursday, yeah. and it's now Sunday, and uh, and we don't know if those batteries are on its last life or the beginning of its life. Yeah. So um, typically we use all fresh batteries. So all those things from batteries, we have wireless comms. Our wireless comms have batteries. Mm -hmm. So we um, batteries, 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 and more batteries. Yeah. Uh, typically we use on a, on a given Sunday probably about 60 to 80 batteries. Wow. Right? So that alone is just a job yeah. to make sure people put batteries yeah. in. Um, and, of course, uh, we want to make sure that... Um, all the other areas, not just the sanctuary, but we have a chapel, we have a children's wing, and we have monitors that are shown throughout the entire 
uh, facility, mm -hmm. and they have to be up and running as well. Wow. So those are all the things that get checked yeah. um, when I come in that early. Wow. Yeah, so. So you mean to say Sunday, um, <laughs> does to make Sunday awesome doesn't start on Sunday? Doesn't start on Sunday. <laughs> Uh, I've been saying that for years. No, it's it, it's, it's not just showing up and everything is golden. It's yeah. it's the prep before the week. It's all the prep. Um, it's the lead up to the uh, to the Sunday service. Yeah. Um, we typically have uh, our um, we have a full staff production meeting, and then we have a technical staff uh, um, post meeting after rehearsal. Yeah. Right, and then we have a one more um, run through on Sunday morning before we start service. So that's literally three times that we go over yeah. it before we uh you know we check our stream we check making you know to make sure that we're wide open to broadcast to our um online campuses yeah. uh, so um uh so we go three times yeah f to make one sunday happen yeah yeah wow yeah so um yeah, it's quite a bit. Yeah, it's <laughs> quite, quite a, a bit. bit. Yeah, and, and we hope that, you know, of course, when everything comes online, we yeah. mo then have to monitor every system to make sure that um, there are no glitches. Yeah. And if there is a glitch, then we have to quickly uh, come up with a solution. Yeah. You know, typically uh, in our house here, we have a primary, primary system. We have a secondary system. So if we lose our primary, we go to our secondary. Mm -hmm. And... Um, uh, we also have a tritary system, so it's not as deep as our secondary, yeah. but, um, you know, at few cases we've had to use our tritary system. Just recently, about two weeks ago, we lost our sub amps, <laughs> <laughs> and I had to... Um, In service or...? During service. Wow. So um, we relocated uh, or actually re re-diverted sound to the front fills mm -hmm. to fill in a little bit more down you know, other than... Because typically we'll high-pass our front fills. Yeah. They don't need, you know, low end. Yeah. Well, we had to we had to add back a add little bit. Back. A little bit. Dial back a little bit more yeah. so we can uh, have a little more fullness yeah. down at the very bottom um, yeah. or front. And, mm -hmm. uh, and during that time, I uh, had to switch out the uh, amps and and to repower the subs. And of course our tri -terry, I didn't have another 13K amp. <laughs> so we, I had a third of the power. Yeah. So we had to make some changes on our graph. You have to have a backup system. Yeah. It's always important to have a backup. And um, in this case, I was already using my backup systems. Mm -hmm. And when our subs went out, I had to go into my tri -terry, my third backup system. Yeah. And um, uh, I, however, I did not have a, another 13K um, uh, sub amp to replace. Mm -hmm. I put it in with uh, the biggest amp that I had, which had about, oh, 3,000 watts of power. That's it. Bridged at maybe 4,000. Um, so once I did that, it wasn't the end of the fire. I replaced it. Um, and uh, making your equipment accessible is very important as yeah. well. Yeah. You know, um, so uh, perhaps later down the line, you can go down and you can take a picture of where some of that equipment is. Yeah. Um, but um, take a look at some of your gear. <laughs> Danny has some of the nicest gear uh, and the cleanest area. You can eat off the floor. I've been saying this for what, like three years, right? Um, it's uh, wonderful to see um, working environment clean and people function in such a good um, environment. So in s essentially, um, technical directors are problem solvers, troubleshooters. Yes. yes. And it's not just on the audio side or the video side or the lighting side, but it's more, you know, just to make sure all the production elements are intact yes. from the tech side. Absolutely. So if the streaming is down sure. or something is going on, they call you. Absolutely. And we have to quickly provide a, a, a um, workaround. Yeah. There's, uh, the answer is not, uh, sorry, we can't help you. It's, <laughs> it's Or uh, shrug your shoulders. Yeah. Shrug your shoulders and say, well, <laughs> maybe next Sunday. <laughs> yeah. No, our, our goal is um, just recently um, we have a electronic, um, actually it's a uh, retractable um, jib arm. Yeah. Right? Uh, and uh, something malfunctioned on it. It was uh, a battery. Of course, uh, we have to have that shipped in. Mm -hmm. But you have to have a solution for... You can't just say, hey, you know, sorry, pastor. Yeah. 
we lost our jib, we, we're not going to have any cutaways this service. Yeah. Cutaways meaning um, um, video footage of responses um, um, uh, of the congregation, of the congregation um, yeah. not from the back of the head, but from the view, you know, basically from the stage view where, where mm -hmm. you're able to see the actual yeah. faces of the, of the congregation. Yeah. And our jib shot normally takes care of that. So um, uh, this past uh, couple, actually it's been the last two Sundays now, that uh, we had to create a different solution mm -hmm. to be able to continue those cutaways. Yeah. You know, so you can't, you always uh, uh, solve, you, we solve the problem the best we possibly can. Yeah. You know, um, there is the, the, there is no answer that says, mm -hmm. I can't do it. Yeah. The thing I like to say to teams, you know, whenever we, you know, talk to just young techs coming up is lives are dependent on these things. Yes. Um, these technology, they're good, you know, you have a nice console or, you know, great microphones, whatever it is, but lives are dependent on sure. these things to work when they are in the sanctuary on a Sunday, on an event, whatever. Yes. Um, and you are cognizant of that, Danny. Yes. What's your preparation like for, not just for Sundays, but going into knowing that, that you know, your team has to be prayed up and your team has to be, you know, at least understanding the goal. What we try to create on all of our teams mm -hmm. is a, a positive workspace, mm -hmm. um, um, which really uh, um, uh, promotes the spirit of God in the place. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> we also instill people with vision, mm -hmm. um, you know, so that uh, we're vision-minded and uh, into a single vision of the, the purpose of the church. Yeah. Right. And and um, uh, once we have that foundation, you know. Um, one of the things that I, I, I love doing with my team is, is uh, I, I, you know, even though it's a, it's a, um, it's a serious moment where mm -hmm. we ha when when production comes online, mm -hmm. you know, I love to make sure that my team is as relaxed yeah. as possible. You know, sometimes I might be cracking jokes. I'm I'm coming off the cuff. Mm -hmm. You know, and because I like to make sure they're comfortable. If mm -hmm. they're comfortable, it makes them, you know, it's a lot of pressure already mm -hmm. for people that don't know that's not worked behind here. Mm -hmm. You may think, uh, I remember a person asked me, he said, Danny, you've been doing this for 32 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 32 years now. Yeah. And uh, he says, uh, this must be real easy for you. I says, no, <laughs> man, I, I still shake when I, and I pray a lot when I go out and, yeah. and I have to mix uh, someone or, or do monitors for someone or, mm -hmm. and um, you know, it's, you never get that comfortable, yeah. you know, and, and if a professional feels that way when they come in, mm -hmm. you know, it's even greater for, for a volunteer. Yeah. You know, so we just try to make sure that it's a comfortable environment. And this is why I come in at 5, 5.30. Yeah. Uh, so that when they come in, they, they're able to know that their station is working fine, mm -hmm. whether it's a robotic, whether it's lighting, whether it's audio, yeah. video, um, our duplication, our streaming. Mm -hmm. um, so creating a comfortable environment which also uh, fosters spiritual growth mm -hmm. uh, is something that we, we, we mm -hmm. try to do here um, with our teams. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Um, how do you feel um, you succeed by keeping all of your team members in the loop? Mm -hmm. Plus you have a specific like a group chat or a specific place where everybody can see what's going on, any new changes? Because sure. a lot of churches don't have that. Oh, and that's a good question. wanted to shed some light on how you, you know, the big timers do it oh, over it's here. it's not big timers. <laughs> We're still trying to get it going here. But, but um, uh, what we use here uh, so that everyone stays in the loop is a planning center. Planning mm -hmm. center um, services mm -hmm. is... Uh, just one of their applications that they use here. We use actually a few of their applications, but mm -hmm. for worship services, we use Planning Center services, and that allows us to create our, I don't have one here, I typically do, but I think we threw them all away for the past Sunday, but um, we typically uh, keep people in contact. All of our, all those that are serving are connected yeah. to services, so yeah. they're able to see um, who's uh, actually serving that day. Mm -hmm. Who's on, on who's on robotics? Mm -hmm. Who's on the jib? Who's on the main camera? Who's yeah. on the lighting board? Which services they're on? Yeah. And they're able to stay connected that way. Yeah. Um, we uh, typically hold meetings. I try not to hold a lot of meetings with, with uh, the team. Um, um, you know, I used to be a, a stickler on meetings. <laughs> 
you know? I used to have meeting to meet about the meeting to talk about. The well, meeting, it'll be a pre-meeting, a post-meeting, <laughs> a meeting in between the meeting, yeah. right? And so now, what I actually have learned to do was um, during service, yeah. I actually just take notes. Yeah. Right. And I and I create these notes as learning points, um, con and constructive learning points. Mm -hmm for when we meet with the teams. And when I meet with the teams, I used to meet with the entire team. Yeah. And I've now broken them down to where we actually, if it's just the directors, mm -hmm. then all we're gonna talk about are just directors. Yeah. I, I value, one of the things that I value are, are people's time. It's people's time. And if all I'm doing is talking about directors and I've got robotics and audio here, yeah. I'm wasting their time. They're like, okay, can we go now? Yeah, why am I here? I, I now just spent 30 minutes talking about mm -hmm. the different examples on what they should capture on how to tell the story. That's yeah. not and nothing to do yeah. with audio. Earlier, you said you know you have wireless comms, uh -huh. and you mean you're you're. Are you telling me that you're not standing one place and yelling, "Hey, look no. out!" or texting somebody, "Hey, this is what you really could just now." What what's that? Because a lot of people don't know what it means to communicate in show or in service right right and you know just just those little things sure uh, can you share some light on that yeah absolutely <clears throat> you don't necessarily have to have a wireless com because of the size of our, our building mm -hmm. and and um, the numerous areas um, we do have uh, um, wireless comms um, we also because our operators our camera operators uh, we have um, up to three wireless camera operators mm -hmm. that um, that are off sticks that are on shoulder and um, it's just easier for them not to have wires, mm -hmm. you know, following behind them. Uh, we like to try to keep a clean look, you know, so mm -hmm. we have two people running down the aisle. It's just, it's just too distracting yeah. or can be distracting, yeah. you know, uh, pulling wire, pulling wire back up. It's just uh, mm -hmm. um, not that type of environment. Yeah. So, um, uh, so they get the wireless comms as well. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, for those that are just getting into comms, um, comms are real time. So if I need something to go on three, two, one, you can't do that on text. Yeah. You know, by the time you say three, Depending two, one. Depending on the carrier, it's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, hey, do you have Verizon or T-Mobile, right? Like, hey, Verizon doesn't work here. Service yeah. is done, you're getting the whoop. That's right. <laughs> and that's right. when you're getting the text. So, um, so comms are, are great to keep all the teams in the loop on when, uh, you know, when the lights are to come down when we play video, yeah. uh, when audio is about to play the, the um, uh, audio in the video, mm -hmm. um, um, when broadcast is to go to um, uh, video or wherever they're going to uh, pull up on their program. Mm -hmm. So uh, if everyone's on comm, it's just easier to communicate to the various locations in real time. Yeah. Yeah, so. So I'm new, I'm new to the town. Mm -hmm. I say I see this church, I see the production, I want to be a volunteer. Mm -hmm. I sign up to be a volunteer, I get to meet you. Mm -hmm. You give me the lay of the land. Sure. What next for, sure. for your volunteer? Sure, I, that's a great question. So I, I had, um, I've been here now going on 11 years. First several years, when I first started, there was probably 12 people in the entire ministry, mm -hmm. right? And then uh, we grew to well over 100, maybe 150. And now um, it has, we've brought it back quite a bit. Uh, we're probably down to about, I want to say closer to 50 now, right? Wow. And there's a reason for that. <clears throat> um, number one, uh, to try to provide um, training schedules or training mm -hmm. um, through the week, there are some challenges. Mm -hmm. So we have, we have, uh, so we have basically three different um, types of volunteers, right? Mm -hmm. So we have our youth. Those are, we have people as young as 10, 11 years old. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them are actually, um, one of them is actually extraordinary. She's, uh, her name's Heaven. Mm -hmm. She um, actually uh, can work uh, all positions in the video uh, um, department. Uh, she can, she's also worked the, the main switch mm -hmm. as a director. Yeah. So she's calling all the shots. Yeah. 11 years old. Man. I remember you can telling you, me yeah, about Evan. her. It's uh, right. So, so <laughs> anyway, uh, but so from 11 to about 18 is our youth, uh, volunteers, mm -hmm. right. And, and then that's a revolving door yeah. because once they graduate, they're yeah. gone. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They say they'll be back, but we know college yeah. and all those growing up, it just, They'll come back for a while, but after, after a while, the visits shorten and uh, their lives move on, yeah. which is to be expected. You, want to, you don't want their lives to move on. Yeah.
And then we have um, our elderly or our, our, our most uh, senior uh, of, of the group. Um, uh, we have them between 60 and about 72 years old. Yeah. You have a 72 year old yes. on your team. Absolutely. Wow. And he's probably been with the ministry longer than I've been here. So. Is that the guy that's working the Clarence. duplication? Oh, yeah. he's an awesome yeah, guy. Yeah, Clarence he's... will do duplication. Yeah. He'll fill in for um, home-going services and run our video world here. Yeah. He does Bible study for us, uh, our morning Bible study, all the audio and video for it. So yeah. he's uh, one of our most active yeah. members. Very at sharp, 72. very yeah. sharp. So, so I want to ask you this, Danny. How does one prepare themselves to be a technical director? Wow, that's, that's, a, that's a great question. That's a great question. I'm glad you asked it. Um, um, you know, technical director is not, um, it's not one specialty. Mm -hmm. It's uh, an array of specialties, mm -hmm. right? Um, so it's not, uh, um, and it typically takes a number of years to, um, to become a technical director, mm -hmm. to be able to see the full gamut of... Um, uh, how everything is put together. So, you know, you're, you're really an array of uh, um, um, multiple specialties, yeah. right? Um, and actually specializing in, um, uh, in, in uh, diverse areas from audio to lighting to video. Yeah. Um, and that's what allows you to, to be a technical director to, and to be able to connect all the pieces together in, uh, in your environment. Mm -hmm. Right, so, um, so a technical director isn't the first person that shows up that has the keys to open the place. Uh, sometimes they are. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes they are. <laughs> yeah, and sometimes they're the last one leaving. Yeah. Uh, after the uh, custodial crew. As yeah. Well. <laughs> so, yeah, because uh, after everything's done, uh, um, um, that technical director has to make sure that that um, all the teams are yeah. are. Um, 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 Putting everything back in place, uh, yeah. uh, resetting if necessary, um, and uh, you know, so we don't just get up and leave, yeah. and uh, and then worry about it the next day. Would yeah. you say a big part of your job is team building? Absolutely. You, you know, especially or oh, in any uh, um, organization, you have to have a team. Mm -hmm. Team. Uh, the the technical director is really um, uh, without a team is nothing. Yeah. Right, because they can't be in all places. Yeah. So he has a team of people in every area, mm -hmm. and um, and to be uh, actually he has team leads, yeah. which then have uh, groups of teams or groups of people under the team leads. Yeah. Right. So um, you know, in your audio department, you may have you know four or five or six different um, audio engineers mm -hmm. from monitors, front of house, broadcasts. Mm -hmm. Sometimes in monitors there are two or three people because mm -hmm. you have one person doing um, uh, the monitor mixing, another yeah. person watching the wireless mics, another yeah. person uh, um, um, working with the musicians and yeah. what their needs are. Yeah. You know, so, um, so you have your team leads yeah. and then you have uh, their group which is right under them that they lead as well. Yeah. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day yeah. to talk with us and shed some light in what you do. Um, you've been doing it in excellence for so many years, and um, Danny's a great friend, um, one of the persons that I could call and say, hey, man, pray for me, or hey, man, I'm having these issues. Help me troubleshoot this. Um, and it speaks volume to see your team you know, execute on a high level Amen. every week. You know, Amen. So thank you so much for... Um, for b taking the time and, you know, shedding some light in your world. Amen. Well, thanks for having me, Kanu. Yeah. And, and you're a great friend as well, too, yeah. brother. Yeah. Thanks, man. There you have it, guys. Danny, we're in Danny's world. <laughs> See you next time. <laughs>